Hello and welcome to Bay College's Intermediate Algebra Online Lectures. Today we're going to talk about section 8.1 which deals with the algebra of functions. Uh, generally it's just mathematics but sometimes we have to work with different functions. And we have to add them, subtract them, multiply and divide them. But when it comes to any function, the first thing we should always assess is the domain. If I see two functions, f of x and g of x, and hopefully we are familiar with the notation here, you say, well, what's the domain of f of x? What's the domain of g of x? Now let's go ahead and do whatever mathematical operations we need to. Well, the first thing we want to do here is just review the notation that we have here. Uh, f of x, function notation for one function, g of x, function notation for a different unique function, but both have the variable x. They're both dependent on the same variable. This means the exact same thing. It's just different notation. It's saying the functions f and g need to be added together, but they both have the same variable, in this case, x. Now, when we look at subtraction, same thing, the notation. We can look at this function notation or this notation. The function f minus g both have the same variable x. And you can see that here as well. So we just have to be familiar with that. And as I mentioned with domain, multiplication, the domain's not going to change. But when we have division, one thing we always have to remember is we can never divide by zero. So if we have a domain restriction of g of x, and now it's in the denominator for dividing by this function, we also have to exclude, what if g of x equals zero? So we cannot allow g of x to equal zero, because that would make this undefined operation. And again, it's just different notation. The function f and g both have the variable x when we're dividing those two functions. So let's go over here and take a look at an example of how we actually go about doing these, the algebra on functions. If you look here, we have the function f of x equals x minus 3, and g of x equals 2x plus 4. The first thing I want to assess is what is the domain of these functions? Well, the first function, hopefully we recognize this is a linear equation. And uh, we can see, well, x minus 3, linear equation, there are no domain restrictions. There's nothing that's going to make me divide by 0, and there's no square root, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, hopefully when we get to division, if we do have a square root, we also have to say, well, we can't have negative values under square roots. That might be another domain restriction. But in this case, they're both linear equations, so they have no domain restrictions. Their domains are all real numbers. So we don't have to worry about that until maybe we get to some division. So we look at this here, f plus g of x, that's telling me to take the function f of x, that's the function f of x, and we're going to add, do the operation here, the function g of x. So x minus 3 plus 2x plus 4. In this case, it's essentially just combining like terms when we add these two functions. I have 2x and x to give me 3x, negative 3 and 4 to give me a positive 1. So f plus g of x is 3x plus 1. This is the addition of their functions to create a new function. All right, f minus g of x. This we have to be a little bit more careful of when we have subtraction. We don't want to make a sign error. If we do this, x minus 3 minus, and I'm going to use parentheses, you always want to use parentheses when you have more than one term you're subtracting, because that's subtracting all the terms. So essentially we have to distribute that negative, distribute it to the 2x and to the 4. That's probably the most common mistake when students work with this. They forget to distribute the negative to this term as well. So now if I go to combine like terms, I have x and a negative 2x, which leaves me negative x. I have negative 3 minus a positive 4. So negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So f minus g of x equals negative x minus 7, a new function. Now notice that it's still a linear equation, still has the domain of all real numbers, but it's a different function altogether. Now f times g of x, if we look at that, we're going to take the function f of x, and we're going to multiply it by g of x, 
And because these are binomials, we can use that process of FOIL. So I'm just going to FOIL it out and combine like terms. x times 2x is 2x squared. And then we have negative 6x and a positive 4x for a negative 2x. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And we end up with a nonlinear function, but we notice, because we looked at the domain of these, the domain of this is still the same. It's all real numbers. We can put in any value of x. Nothing's undefined. Nothing's the square root of a negative. So we're fine there. Now, when we do this one, we have f divided by g of x. So we're going to do that division. f of x is x minus 3. And g of x is 2x plus 4. Now, we could simplify here. But before we do that, we realize, hey, there is an x in the denominator. Now we have a domain restriction. So I have to look at this and say, well, what value of x might make this 0? Well, if x is a negative 2, if we were to set this equal to 0 and solve for it, we'd get x equals negative 2. So we have that domain restriction, x cannot equal negative 2, because we can never divide by 0. And then we would try to simplify this or reduce this if we couldn't. If we look at this, x minus 3, there's nothing I can factor out of that. I could factor out a 2 here, but it's not going to cancel, and I'd be left with x plus 2. So nothing's going to cancel. That is the function. It is already simplified, but we did have that domain restriction. So we state the domain. x cannot equal negative 2. Let's look at one more example uh, dealing with this right here. It says f plus g of 2. Well, if we recall function notation, what if I just had f of 2? Well, this tells me to replace the x value of f of x for 2, and then do the math. Well, this is saying add the functions together and replace x with 2. If we just move back for a moment, we have f plus g of x right here. And when we added those together, we got 3x plus 1. So f plus g of x is 3x plus 1, but we want f plus g of 2. So in place of that x value, I put the 2. And this is evaluating the added functions. So our new function is going to be evaluated for 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 equals 7. So f plus g of 2 equals 7. An input of 2 gives me an output of 7, an x and a y value of our new function when we add them. All right, we have another example here. And the first thing we want to do is if we look at these functions, f of x is 2x minus 8. It's a linear function. All real numbers is its domain. But let's pause for a moment and look at this. I recognize this function to have a square root. And I say, you know what? We, we have to watch our domain when it comes to square roots. We can't graph a value that's imaginary, because it's just that imaginary. It's not the real number system. So we have to take this and say, well, 2 minus x must be greater than or equal to 0. I don't want any negative value. So I set it greater than or equal to 0. And if I add x to both sides, I get x is less than or equal to 2. So I'm just going to write here my domain is x is less than or equal to 2. That's my domain for this function. So if I add these functions together, that domain is not going to change. If I subtract these functions, that domain isn't going to change. Uh, if I multiply them, that domain isn't going to change. But if I divide, well, it might change something. So we always have to reassess if we're going to divide by one of these functions. So let's go ahead and add this and check that. Does the domain uh, remain the same? Well, f plus g, I'm going to take 2x minus 8 and add the square root of 2 minus x. Well, essentially, we're already done because I don't have any like terms. I can't split this up in any way. So that's it. We're done. Easy enough. And if we look at this, here, this x value could be anything. But this x value still maintains that domain. So the domain of this function would also be x less than or equal to 2. If we look at subtraction, we have f minus g. Now, I could put parentheses around it because it is subtraction. But this uh, square root actually works as my grouping symbol, so I don't need it. And we notice, OK, notice the domain isn't going to change here. This can be anything, but this one has to uh, have a value 2 or greater. x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, if we multiply these, 2x 
minus 8 times g of x, which is 2 minus x. Now, this is not a binomial. It's just a single term. It's just a radical term. All I can really do here is distribute. Distribute this to the first term and distribute this to the next term. So we had a binomial and essentially a monomial in one term. So if I distribute that, we have 2x square root of 2 minus x minus 8 square root of 2 minus x. So it's simplified through distribution. Really nothing else I can do with that. And we look here, we still have this 2 minus x. So our domain hasn't changed, but still x must be greater than or equal to 2. Now we have f divided by g. This is a unique case. Well, not unique, but this is where we have to pay attention to domain. If we have the function f of x, and we're going to divide it by g of x, <coughs> we already know the domain of g of x is this value must be greater than or equal to 2. But now that it's in the denominator, it cannot equal 0. So we have to say 2 minus x can't be negative, nor can it equal 0. So that's why when I do this, I don't have that equal sign there. And if I add x to both sides, I get x is less than 2. x less than 2. This is our new domain. And it is different than the original domain, x greater than or equal to 2, because x cannot equal 2. That's what makes this undefined. So watch your domain. Always check your domain, especially when you divide by a function. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this uh, application problem. Graph the sum of the function f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 2. Maybe we recognize this as a parabola, our library function. And we recognize this as a horizontal line, a constant function. Now, if I want to add these, how do I know where the points go? Well, what I can do is I can do the algebra. I can find the sum of the two functions. Uh, let's do it this way. f plus g of x. They both have the same variable, so I can add them. x squared is my f. And I'm going to add g of x, which is just 2, and there's nothing else I can do with it. This is what I need to graph, the sum of these two functions, which makes a new function. And if I graph this, maybe I recognize this, hey, that's a parabola. We've seen parabolas in the previous chapter that shifted up 2. And I have now graphed the sum of those two functions. Not too bad, right, especially when we can use those resources of the last chapter to just sketch the graph. All we needed here was its vertex. No h value, the k is value 2, so 0, 2 is my vertex, and it does open up. All right, let's look at the next example I have here. We're asked to graph the difference of two functions, f and g of x. But this time, we're not actually given the functions we're just given a series of points from each function. Now the key to this, in order to add or subtract or multiply or divide, in all the examples we looked at, they had the same variable x, the same input. So if we're going to subtract them as a series of points, we have to align our inputs. If x was 0 for one function, x is 0 for the other function, now I can find their difference. We don't find their difference in x. That's their common uh, variable. We find the difference in their outputs. So if I were to graph this point, f minus g of x, the first point I'm going to get is for when the input is 0, the subtraction of the two functions' outputs, 2 minus 4, f minus g. Order does matter here. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And this is a point I can graph. So when x is 0, y is negative 2. Now if I want to find uh, the next point, we have 1, 1 for the f function and 1, 2 for the g function. Our input is the same, so I can say f minus g, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. When x was 1, we, our output was negative 1, so now I can graph that. When x is 1, our y value is negative 1. 
And then the last value, we see the x value is 2. So we can find the difference in their outputs, their y values, f's output and g's output, negative 1 minus a negative 2. Don't make that sign error, right? We're subtracting these values, f minus g. Negative 1 minus a negative 2 is the same as negative 1 plus 2, which would give us a positive 1. And now I can put this on the graph. When x is 2, y is a positive 1. And we can see these aren't a straight line, right? There's a difference as we go from here to here to there to there. So it isn't a straight line. So we do have to watch that. Be careful. Don't make the sign errors. Uh, and that's about it for the algebra of functions. So review this. Work on the homework. Get familiar with it. You're going to see it again and again as we move on in the course. Thank you for watching.